Well, I got up here without my book of the month. <laughs> I am Reverend Marla Mason, and it is a blessing and a privilege to serve as your minister this morning. I want to open with our reading from our book of the month, In the Flow of Life. Jeff, I'm reading from page 48. <laughs> Fulfilling a personal request. On page 48, In the Flow of Life by Eric Butterworth. He says, what is money? Pieces of paper and coins of gold are of no value in themselves. Their worth is a symbolic activity of faith. Hmm. When people or organizations have faith in one another, they invest a valuation in various media of exchange. Problems arise when they confuse the symbolic with the real. This is why the Apostle Paul says, the love of money is the root of all evils. Not that there is anything intrinsically bad about money, but we imbue money with bad vibrations when we work for the symbols rather than for the flow of God or universal substance. Prosperity is not just having a lot of money. It is having a consciousness of the flow of substance. The true prosperity consciousness is consistently open to the flow, attracts opportunities both to give and to receive, wisely directs the use of substance and remains free from its burden. An important guideline. If you are worried about the money you have or don't have, you are out of the flow. What is success? We have unfortunately equated it with positions and accumulations. We have thought that success comes at a particular rung of the ladder or with the acclaim of the world. This is a delusion. Success is not just getting there. It is earning the right to be there. It is being in the flow. Hallelujah. So let's get ourselves into a little bit of flow, yeah? All right. I'm going to start with today's affirmation. I'll read it through once, and then I'll invite you to join me. Alive with passion and purpose, I boldly live in the spirit of abundance, aligned with the flow of life, effortlessly expressing my gifts. I give and receive freely, growing my gifts and growing in God, and so it is. Please stand and join me with conviction. Alive with passion and purpose, I boldly live in the spirit of abundance, aligned with the flow of life, effortlessly expressing my gifts. And so it is. Please welcome Reverend Patrick Creelman, our guest artist today. I'm feeling blessed. How about you? I'm feeling like life is pretty good. I'm feeling like the spirit is moving here in our community. What do you think? Do you feel an energy, something happening, something greater than we are is moving in the room and it's moving in our hearts and it's permeating us. And not only that, it's moving beyond this room. It's moving into our community and into our world, making the world a better place. And you know why? Because you showed up. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, I don't have a reason to get up at 5 a.m. on Sundays. Wait a minute, let me rethink that. I... <laughs> Without you, we have no purpose. Because our job here, our mission, the purpose, the reason we exist is to support you in your spiritual awakening. So that one person at a time, we change the world. Because what I believe is that that's the only way it's going to happen, right? That's the only way the world's going to change is one person at a time. We've tried to change whole cultures. We've, ch we've tried killing each other. We've tried all kinds of things. And where true awakening is going to happen is when your heart is beating with the pulse of God love, then you are expressing that freely and generously 
and giving that and also willing to receive the pulse of God love. And when you do that, and I do that, and the people next to you do that, and the people across the street, and the people down the street, and the people in another continent over are all vibrating with the pulse of infinite love, then the world will be a different place. I'm excited about it. How about you? I think it's going to be awesome. This is the world I want to live in. And so right here in our community, we are doing the business of helping you wake up, helping me wake up. But that's not the end game. The end game is a better world. And so you show up to be present to this. And all month long, we've been talking about the gifts that you bring to our community. The biggest gift you bring is your presence. You show up. You give us a reason to be here. Another gift you bring that we talked about the second week is we talked about your prayers. And we asked you if you're not already to be in prayer for this community, and we even gave you a prayer to pray. How's that going? Yeah? Or you can pray one of your own. Or you can even take the prayer we ask you to pray for us and you can kind of nudge that around a little bit and make it into a really awesome prayer for yourself. So that's a gift that you bring to this community. And a gift that you bring to this community is your participation, your willingness not to just show up and be a lump in a chair, but to open your heart and say yes to service to supporting this community, to supporting your fellow community members by being a place of service and serving from the very heart of God, from the heart of love, serving with a consciousness of love, serving in the place that that pulsation of love is serving as you. And today we are talking about the gift of your prosperity that you bring to our community. What is prosperity? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary to succeed, to thrive, to flourish, especially financially. How many of you are succeeding financially? Who's thriving financially? Who's flourishing financially? Who's struggling maybe a little bit? Shall we explore what it means to bring the gift of your prosperity to this community? Even if it feels like you are struggling, you are still prosperous. And what did we talk about last week? We give what we want to get, right? And for me, one of the greatest lessons of my life and of my financial life has been what is my willingness to give of my prosperity, my financial good, such that I can generate more of that in my life. See, Eric Butterworth said, Prosperity is not money or things. It is the consciousness of being in the flow, in the flow of life. How do we get in the flow? Well, the first thing you got to do is dive in. You can't flow in the river if you're sitting on the bank. <laughs> Just saying. And here's an interesting thing. I remember uh, when I was a kid, we used to go uh, to this park in Centralia for our family reunions, and it had a river, and that's where I learned mostly, mostly learned to swim. And here was the thing about jumping in the river. At first, I was scared, right? And I'm flailing around, and my brother's, <laughs> he's trying to help me, but he's really holding me under. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but you know. <laughs> but I'm flailing, I'm kicking, and I'm drowning, and what I had to do was dive in and allow. Dive in and surrender. Dive in and simply float. And stop my kicking and screaming. You know, there's a song, I was talking to somebody here about this the other day, there's a song called Kicking and Screaming Down the Path of Transformation. <laughs> How many of you come down this path kicking and screaming? I know I did, the first 10 years, man. I was going to argue with everything. Kicking and screaming, down the path of transformation. And you know, when I learned to stop kicking and screaming and surrender and allow, and I can lay in the river and be in the flow, and it's a beautiful thing, and around the bend, and there was another place to crawl out, and we'd get up, and we'd run around, and we'd get in the river, and we'd flow down again. It's great family reunion memory. And a beautiful life lesson 
For me to succeed at swimming, I had to get in the flow. I had to allow the river to swim me. And then I began to be successful. I began to thrive. I began to flourish. I began to, dare I say, prosper as a swimmer. Now, I opened this series three weeks ago with a joke, and I'm going to say this joke again just because I think it's one of the best jokes I've ever heard, but also because it does something really important. You may have heard this before. Two women are marooned on a desert island, and one of them is fretting and freaking out, and we're going to die. And and the other one's lounging on the beach, and the first woman goes to the second woman and says, aren't you afraid we're going to die? And the first woman says, no. I make a million a year, and I tithe 10% to my church. My minister will find me. And I said then, and I'll say now, I'll find you. (laughs) Whether you make 10,000 a year or 50,000 a year or a million a year, I will find you and implore you to support this great and mighty work of God. And the reason I like that joke so much is it kind of, you know, there's kind of this taboo talking about money in church, isn't there? How many of you are going, oh my God, I can't believe she's going there. Is that kind of, you know? Sometimes talking about money in church is like, oh, they just want my money. Anybody kind of go there a little bit? If it's all about money, that's all they want. Well, if it was all about money, we'd talk about money every Sunday. Actually, we talk about money once a year. If it was all about money, we wouldn't have any programs for you. We would just take your money. If it was all about money, we wouldn't have musicians and we wouldn't have a building and we wouldn't have youth program and we wouldn't have women's group and we wouldn't have small groups, which are coming back in January, just so you know. We wouldn't have all of those things because that's where your money goes is to support all of those things. And all of those things support our mission of waking you up so the world can be a better place. Now, is that a worthy mission? Is that worth supporting? And you know what drives me crazy? When the Red Cross asks for your money, you, people don't go, oh, they only want our money. When the American Cancer Society says, you know, we'd like some money so we can fulfill our mission, we don't go, oh, it's all about the money for them. Why is it when our church says, we want your support so that we can fulfill our mission? Why is it people suddenly go, oh, jeez, how dare they? that somehow there is a disconnect between spirituality and money. And so I like that joke because it normalizes the conversation. It just, in a really abrupt way, introduces the notion that I'm your minister and it is my commission by your board of trustees to fulfill our mission. And I can't do it without your money. It can't be done. So... Just give and we'll all go to brunch now. (laughs) No, I have a couple more important things to say. (laughs) Have you ever seen a chocolate fountain? And the chocolate goes up the middle and it spills down the sides. And they usually have like strawberries or pineapple or something and you can just swipe your little fruit there and you can eat a chocolate fountain. You know what's interesting about a chocolate fountain? You only get chocolate out of it if you put chocolate into it. If you put wine in that fountain, you're going to get wine. If you put grapefruit juice, you're going to get grapefruit juice. If you put motor oil, you're going to get... Right? I don't want to... I'm swiping my strawberry and motor oil. And if you don't clean it between the motor oil and the chocolate, what are you going to get? Motor oily chocolate. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? What comes out is what goes in. Hmm. I wonder if that's a metaphor. I don't know. You see, everything flows in cycle, doesn't it? 
everything flows in cycle. Even the uni you know, our universe is expanding, like what I suspect is maybe so. I don't know this, because nobody knows this, right? But what feels like a really cool idea to me is that our universe is expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding, and someday it's going to go... <sighs> and that we live in an endless cycle of reception and release. The very breath of God is the universal presence. That's what we're having our being in. What an exciting idea to me. And I have no idea if it's true. But it's really fun to play with the notion that we live in an endless cycle of the very breath of God. And what goes out comes in. What goes up comes down, all around, within, without. So we have this annual conversation here in our center about what's in our fountain. Chocolate? Grapefruit juice? Motor oil? And are we cleaning out our fountain between uses so that our chocolate isn't tainted? And what I mean by that is, are we being clear about who we are and the kind of behavior that involves? You know, I've been reading this really interesting novel, and the, the main character in the novel is actually having his... Um, the novel is written from the point of view of someone who is in the body of another person. But what makes this really, really interesting is the person who is in the body of another person doesn't know what the person is thinking or feeling, only sees what the person does. Now, isn't that an interesting thing to think about? If you spent 24-7 inside of someone else with no access to what they're thinking about or what they're feeling, but 24-7 wide awake to what they do. It's an interesting idea, isn't it? Are we awake 24-7 to what we do, how we behave, how we engage? Is our chocolate untainted with motor oil? The motor oil of gossip and complaining and whining. And then Reverend and Marlon talking about money again. How dare you? <laughs> or whatever it is for you. Because if we're all tied up in that, we can't fulfill our mission. If we're all busy about that, we're not waking up, we're shutting down. Make sense? Because what goes out, I mean, what goes in is what comes out. What goes in is what comes out. What goes in is what comes out. And so our goal is to be really centered and clear about who we are and to be, make sure that our behaviors, what we do in the world is in alignment with who we say we are. And we say we're here to wake up. We say we're here to make the world a better place. Are we awakening? Are we, awakening? Are we engaging in the practices that are going to wake us up? Are we showing up differently in the world such that the world can become a better place? Or are we stuck in the motor oil in the fountain? Just asking. Your participation and the quality of your participation here counts. Your presence, your prayers, your participation, and your prosperity. And how you show up counts. You make a difference here. You make it possible for us to do what we do. And Eric Butterworth, in our reading this morning, talked about the consciousness with which we give. The prosperity consciousness is the consciousness of flow. And let me put it this way. It is the consciousness of God. What do you suppose God's thinking about? Does God even think? What? See, these are the things I lie in bed at night and think about. <laughs> <laughs> is God thinking right now? Hmm, I don't know. What is God anyway? What is God anyway? The best we can do is we kind of poke around what we think it might be as we come up with the, these notions that, that God is an energy, a presence, 
a beingness. And we can infer by what we see in the world that it is life-giving, that it is eternally giving. Because look at all the life. Look at you. Look at me. Look at the plants. Look at fall. Isn't it amazing out there? God, that which from which all things flow, must be a life-giving presence that puts in and in and in and cycles chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. And we get all stuck in the idea that, oh, I was given motor oil. Well, no, you weren't. You were given chocolate. You put motor oil in your fountain and your chocolate got all messed up. That's okay. Because you know what? You can clean your fountain and start over. And that's what the spiritual journey is about. It's about... Uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, in class the other night, we were watching David R. Hawkins, who wrote Power Versus Force. Who, who's read that? Amazing book, Power Versus Force. Read that if you haven't. Um, and he was talking about that our spiritual realization is progressive. I don't know about you, but I kind of entered this teaching thinking, oh, wow, I'm going to wake up next Sunday. Cool. <laughs> oh, it didn't happen today. I get, oh, I'll take that class. That class will do it. Eight weeks later, huh? Well, it's the retreat. I'm going to go on the retreat. That'll do it. Well, I'm still having, what? I still got motor oil in my chocolate fountain. What? But what I begin to realize over time is that as I was committed and dedicated to opening my heart more and more fully to the presence, to studying, to showing up, to taking more classes, to going on more retreats, it's a progressive incremental process. Just like you all seen that oak tree right out here, right? I'm paying a lot of attention to that oak tree right now because it keeps messing up my car. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. And that oak tree was the size of my thumb in a little acorn once. We did not get oak tree overnight. That oak tree's been growing out there 40, 50 years. It's progressive. And so how I show up and whether I show up and how I participate in the consciousness with which I show up, do I show up with the consciousness of life-affirming givingness, loving, positive? Do I duplicate the nature, the mind of God in how I show up? Or am I all stuck in my odor, motor oil fountain? You see, we have a mission to fulfill here. We are here to wake up ourselves and others, to make the world a better place, to make a difference. Do you think the world could use a little help right now? <laughs> Me too. Can we be the place where that good can show up? This community makes a difference. In fact, think about this. Think about our staff here. Monica, myself, Allison, transitioning out right now, no longer staff. Oh, my heart. Uh, 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 our licensed unity teacher, Judy. Think about all of our prayer chaplains. Oh, Pat, our new volunteer coordinator. Think of all of our prayer chaplains. Think of the members of this community. Now, I'm willing to bet that one of these people who just came to mind for you has inspired you in some way has changed you in some way, has supported you, has helped you in some way. Is that true? Someone here has made a difference to you. You have received value because of our people, because of our programs. That's the chocolate in our fountain. We need more chocolate in our fountain. Will you be a source? Will you be a source by investing where you are receiving value? See, to prosper means to do well, to flourish, to thrive, right? We are a prosper prosperous church. We are thriving. We're doing very well. We've had some hiccups along the way, but the arc is ever upward. Help us put more chocolate in the fountain so that we can fulfill 
our mission more fully than we ever have before so that we can expand and grow. Prosper us. Your life is prospered. Give what you wish to receive. Duplicate the very mind of God that is life-affirming and life-giving always. This is the work we are about together, and we cannot do it without you. It cannot be done without your investment in the mission, in the purpose. And you know, yeah, we use the money to pay for salaries and lights and building and all that, absolutely, but what you are really supporting with the building and the lights and the staff and the everything is the difference we make in your life and the difference we make in other people's lives and the difference we can make in the lives of people who are not here yet. Did you hear me? The people who are not here yet are hungry. Let's get them here and let's be the place where they too can be transformed. So right now, Actually, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. Hmm. I'm just checking in. Yeah, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Can we have a little meditation? <laughs> oh, Lordy. God is so hilarious sometimes. So what I invite you to do, let's seal this message. Because what we want to do is move into the flow. Allow ourselves to be centered in the flow of life. And so I invite you to bring your attention to your breath. And as you breathe, remember that endless cycle of reception and release the breath. The activity of spirit in us, the universe, is God's breath. We are living and moving and have our, having our being in the very body of God, and it breathes us. And as it breathes us, we simply surrender. Saying yes to all that is about to unfold. I just invite you now to see yourself standing on the riverbank. And you are preparing to dive in. And you see yourself standing there and perhaps you're concerned. Perhaps you're worried it will be cold. Perhaps you don't know how to swim. Perhaps some other fear is surfacing in your mind or in your heart, and you simply say, okay. And you dive in anyway. Just allow yourself to fall into the soothing waters of God. The river of God is flowing in your heart and in your life, and you simply allow yourself to fall forward. You are caught by the living waters of life. And any temptation or need to struggle, you simply surrender to the support, to the presence, to the flow of life. And you feel yourself lifted, spinning gently on the surface of the water and flowing in the very presence of God itself. you realize that you are surrounded by a community that supports you. You realize you are not alone in this river of life. And you reach out gently and you touch the hand of another. And you feel yourself embraced. You feel yourself loved. You feel yourself transformed. As you allow your heart to open further than it ever has before, you allow your mind to open further than it ever has before. To the flow of life, the presence of God, 
the beingness that you are. And in the power of this yes, in the power of your willingness, simply know that you carry this awareness, this feeling with you now wherever you go. For you know the truth. You have experienced the truth. And you give generously of your presence, your participation, your prayers, your prosperity. You give generously from and of your heart. For you know the truth. You live in the flow of life. The consciousness of God is your consciousness now. And you simply allow yourself to be in that awareness. And so it's with a grateful heart that I close this message giving thanks for the wisdom, giving thanks for those who have shown up and said yes, giving thanks that God is good and all is well. And so it is. Amen.